Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic and we have another mail day, three packages, two from Italy for my holiday deck, I think, and one, where is this one coming from? Rotterdam, so that's the Netherlands. Maybe I'll start with this one. Let's start with the one from Rotterdam. Let's open it up and have a look. Not sure what I'm gonna find in this one. Okay. I think this was an order through Magic Cart Market. There we go. We'll keep this for later to check. And let's see, so. Ah, we've got a Magnetic Mountain. This is a very special Magnetic Mountain because it's the last card I need to complete my revised collection. Now I've got everything times four. So I'm really happy with that. Really, really happy. Ooh, there's a little bit of a dent in this one. Ah, it's Pavel Maliki. Yeah, what? The art is just absolutely stunning. Plus one, plus O oh for red and black. Six mana to cast for five, three. I mean, when this was printed, you already had the Juggernaut, which is four for a five three. But okay, doesn't matter. It's a really cool card. Um, it could be a really nice, nice commander just because of the art. So epic. By Andy Rusu. Okay, so we're gonna put that here. Nice card so far. Okay, this is just, I don't know what this is. And oh, we've got a living artifact. That is pretty nice. Unlimited, I'm actually um, brewing something with Living Artifact. So Living Artifact is one to cast for an Enchant Artifact. And let's see if we can get this a little clearer. It reads, put a counter on target artifact for each life you lose. During your upkeep, you may trade one counter for one life, but you can only trade in one counter each turn. Right, so basically this is kind of a guarantee that you at least gain one life every turn. I thought maybe it's interesting to combine this with Sylvan Library in kind of an Enchantress deck. And this is not my idea. I actually saw this. I gotta give credits. I don't know where I saw it, but I saw it on another deck picture. I saw Enchantress, Living Artifact, and Sylvan in one deck. And I thought, ooh, that's probably really bad, but it's also cool to try out. So I'm gonna, brew something with that. That idea is kind of in my mind right now. It's a seed and it's slowly growing. And yeah, there will be a deck. So this is my first unlimited living artifact. Um, okay, so I think that's the post of English magic because I think this is all gonna be foreign, right? Because it's all the way from Italy. So we're gonna open this up. Let's have a look. Oh, it's kind of stuck on here. Let me try because I don't want to show addresses or anything. Okay, so here it is. Let me just get this out of the way. It is in a top loader. That is actually a good sign. One card in the top loader. Curious. It's in a really good condition. And, oh, exactly. A Tomo di Gemdea. Okay, that is really good. Ooh, it's a bit, I don't know what this is, but I'll look at it later. Don't want to wreck the card. Kind of, it seems to be sticking on the surface. Anyway, uh, Gemde Tome from Italy, and I'm going to use this one in my Koboldi deck, so really happy to have this, of course, Epic card, right? Forticast, Artifact. And for the people that don't know, there's actually a face in here. You see the eyes and the mouth and the spine of the book. And it's a living book, right? If you go here, these are the organs. And these, the ledger, the book ledger. It looks like book ledgers, right? But it's actually blood kind of sticking out of the book. It's really cool art because they're just, there's a lot happening, a lot of details. Really nice, and it's, it's four to cast, four and tap, of course, to draw a card. 
one of the uh, the more powerful ways, one of the best ways actually to draw cards in old school magic. This is really a staple in old school. You see it in a lot of decks, especially the deck being the most famous example where this card is being played in. So we're gonna put it here. And then we've got something that's in a bubble envelope. That's always a good sign, bubble envelopes. That means it's serious, people. It's bubble envelope. Ooh, okay. There we go. Bubble envelope. Is there a note attached here? Or is it just wrapping paper? Let's have a look. Yeah, it's just, just uh, to pack it in. And I think this is probably the cards, uh, just to protect the cards, right? Yeah, so this is all modern stuff. So we'll put that over there. And oh, here we go. More modern stuff, by the way. Whoop. Here we go. Labyrintho di Ethi. Two mazes of if from Italy. And I'm actually thinking about, I'm not quite sure, but at least I want to use one or two in um, in the deck, uh, the Flying Elementals deck, the Italian deck. Actually, I have a little little picture popping up right here so I can show you. It's, I mean, it's a good deck, but the problem is if my opponent goes too fast, there's too much early pressure. I don't have time to do all the crazy shenanigans that I want to do. So I think a Mason Ed deck together with the walls would really kind of make like for, for a solid way to, to stop my opponent. At least they're good in the sideboard, I think. And I believe these are two more Mazes of If. So Mazes of If is this land that you can tap and then target the attacking creature is taken out of combat and neither deals nor receives any damage and it's also untapped. So it's a really interesting card that you can use offensively and defensively. It used to be restricted for the longest time and now it's no longer restricted. And I don't know, I, I don't think I don't think it's too powerful. I don't think they need to restrict it again. Then again, in certain circumstances, I think maybe they should. I'm not entirely sure yet what to do with this, but for now it's still unrestricted and you can pay, play with the full place that in most old school formats. So um, yeah, it's nice to have four of these Italian ones. And um, this was actually my mail day today, just a little short mail day. Uh, but really happy with all the cards I received. Uh, and I want to thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks. If you want to support the channel, leave a like, um, leave a comment down below. Tell me, maybe give me some advice. What cards would you add into my Flying Elementals deck? And try to remember that um, I want to keep it like a fun deck, if you know what I mean. So, for example, I ordered some lightning bolts, Italian, or were they German, but I could get them for a very good price, but I don't think I'll be playing them in the deck. I just think it's just too much of a stable card to play in that deck, if you know what I mean. So I'm trying to find like original, interesting cards to play. So if you have any ideas or suggestions, uh, please let me know in the comments below. Um, what else can you do? You can subscribe, of course. If you're not a subscriber yet, uh, join the bandwagon, subscribe to Timmy Talks, and uh, you'll be updated. You'll get updates about all the new videos like this one whenever I post it. Uh, something else that you can do is you can become a patron of the channel, and then you can sponsor Timmy Talks, and you can help me doing what I'm doing. How does that work? Very simple. Click on the info card that's appearing right now. That will take you to the Patreon page of Timmy Talks, um, and there you can find all the info and you can already start supporting Timmy Talks from $1 a month. So it is pretty cool. And yes, there are a couple of perks attached to that. One of them is your name will appear in the fantastic, amazing end scroll. Talking about that, let's go and let's take a look at all the amazing, fantastic channel members and wonderful patrons of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken
it was thinking to somebody, 